You are listening to KLRN Radio, where liberty and reason still reign. Most writers and radio show hosts know that to connect with your fans, you need to do more than just write books or record the latest podcasts. There are many different elements that go into forming an online platform, but there are also many hidden traps. To make matters worse, solid advice on how to survive the muddy waters is scarce. In the book Hidden Traps, I talk about some of the important issues of working with an online platform, highlighting traps that could put your physical or internet security at risk, or be harmful to your reputation. Are your social media posts just links with a few disjointed words making you look like someone who can't complete a sentence? Did your new website cost you more than you anticipated? Are you leaking your personal contact details across the web without even knowing it? Then you need Hidden Traps. Hidden Traps is now available in paperback and ebook from a variety of retailers, including Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and Kobo. Visit blackwolfpublications.com for more details. Do you need a car? Been shopping only to be turned down because of bad credit, low credit, no credit, bankruptcy, or divorce? Guess what? Today's your lucky day. Because now you can buy a car, truck, or SUV, just about any vehicle. It's true. Bad credit doesn't matter. No credit doesn't matter. Bankruptcy or divorce, it just doesn't matter. As a matter of fact, your job is your ticket to your new vehicle. We're Auto Credit Express, and we've helped thousands of people just like you. Antonio H. told us, great company, got me connected, and the day I went in, I drove off in the car I wanted. 100% worth your time. Need a car? Get started now and drive off as early as today. Just text FINANCE, F-I-N-A-N-C-E, to 357 right now to get started. That's FINANCE, F-I-N-A-N-C-E, to 357 Auto financing the easy way. Text FINANCE to 357 KLRN Radio has advertising rates available. We have rates to fit almost any budget. Contact us at advertising at klrnradio.com. Everyone loves liberty. Our rights come from God, not the government. So why are you letting other people tell you what's best for your health care? Exercise your freedom with Liberty Health Share. Liberty Health Share is a community of people who voluntarily share one another's medical costs. Liberty Health Share is founded on the idea that most people truly want to help one another. Healthcare sharing allows members to do just that as a true community that supports one another in times of need. Liberty believes people should make decisions for themselves and their families. Members are able to take back the freedom to make their own decisions about their health care. Freedom from guilt or doubt about how your money is used. You have the freedom to direct your health care, not to be dictated to by bureaucrats. Stop letting others tell you what to do and join a community of like-minded people. Exercise your freedom. Join Liberty HealthShare and take back the control of your health care while helping those around you. Call Liberty at 855-58-LIBERTY. Again, that's 855-58-L-I-B-E-R-T-Y for more information, or you can check them out at libertyhealthshare.org. Again, that's libertyhealthshare.org. My son was in the Army back during Desert Storm, but even then he wanted an MBA. He looked at a dozen schools, but only one offered the online education and flexibility he needed while he was in a tent in Iraq, Grantham University. Turns out that Grantham's been delivering affordable, relevant college and advanced degrees for over 65 years. Heck, if they can deliver a quality education to a soldier in a tent overseas, Think about the flexibility Grantham can offer you so you can earn your degree, too. It doesn't matter how complicated or full your life is. If getting a degree is on your bucket list, you'll want to do what my son did. You'll want to call Grantham. Find out how easy it is to get started on your education so you can check that college degree off your bucket list. Call Grantham right now. 800-910-1370. That's 800-910-1370. Flexible, affordable, relevant. Call 800-910-1370. At St. Jude, a family never sees a bill at all. It's like the world has been lifted off of your shoulders. St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. Finding cures, saving children. Learn more at stjude.org. Sometimes riders feel lost, unsure why a passage may not be working. 
It takes another set of eyes to help us nurture our writing into full maturity. At Black Wolf Editorial Services, we strive to enable writers to develop and grow, offering manuscript critiques and line edits through a mentoring editorial style. We also offer assistance on generating a writer's bio for your websites. Black Wolf Editorial Services, nurturing your writing into maturity. For a full list of services, visit blackwolfeditorial.com. You're listening to the Spark Radio Network, internet radio like you've never heard before. Innovation, creativity, and imagination are all said to begin with a spark. So fasten your seatbelt and take the ride of your life and listen for the spark. And so, my fellow Americans, ask not what your country can do for you. Ask what you can do for your country. Freedom is never more than one generation away from extinction. We didn't pass it on to our children in the bloodstream. The only way they can inherit the freedom we have known is if we fight for it, protect it, defend it, and then hand it to them with the well-taught lessons of how they in their lifetime must do the same. All right, folks, good evening. I am one half of the crew, Mr. Rick Robinson. She's the other half, Miss Jen Homestead. And forgive the background noise. We had a little bit of football emergency, so I'm kind of pulling double duty right now. Almost literally. <coughs> but anyway, good evening. <coughs> Man, how are you? I'm doing okay. Sorry if I had to miss on Tuesday. Today. I ended up having an event. That's okay. An event that was supposed to be on Wednesday originally, and the Tuesday gig was supposed to just be like a happy hour early dinner, and I was supposed to be able to get home in plenty of time for this, and oh, they decided to make it an all-nighter, basically. So, um, yeah, so that's why, and I I, I had written that text to you, and I was just going to add on to it, like, you know, probably a no-go tonight, you know, I'll touch base with you later, and then I probably got called away, hey, Jen, where's this how does this where does this plug into what does that do how do we do that and i never actually hit sent until you messaged me and then i was like oh shoot i never sent the message so sorry about that but uh real life called and i couldn't really do anything about it <laughs> that's all right you just don't lo- you just don't love me we know this <laughs> whatever the real reason you're being bitter is because we have our rivalry coming up this week we do. I leave for Dallas tomorrow after I pick the kiddo up from school. I don't know. You know, say what you want. This is one of those games where you just never know till it's over. So, I, I don't know. I'm a little nervous. I mean, I really don't. The wanna, way I, I really don't want to have to say hook 'em horns on the radio. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know the way that um, the the way that Texas is played. I, this last game wasn't so great, but you also have to consider being at Texas State in Manhattan. And Bill Snyder's such a great long-term coach. I mean, he's just his career is actually pretty ridiculous. But um, yeah, this team, I would after the first game of the year, I would not have given them a fighting chance. But they've kind of showed that they are. I don't. I wouldn't say that Texas is back yet necessarily, but they're fighting for it. That's for sure. Yeah, well, so for those of you who may not know, we have a friendly wager every year during what I call the Red River Showdown, because I can't say the, what, what they call it now without tripping over my own tongue, um, because that's what we used to call it before people tried to get fancy. Um, but yeah, so anyway, we have a... Actually, it was even the shootout before that, and then that wasn't okay anymore, because you couldn't say the Red River Shootout. Well, yeah, because that's that's guns, and guns are bad. So then Showdown God, became... I still, have stuff, I still have stuff that says shoot on, shootout on it which was kind of funny. Well, then showdown became the new word for it, and then that yeah. wasn't politically correct anymore. Now they try to put three R's together. I had a speech impediment as a child. I still can't put three R's together. <laughs> I'm like, the red river rivalry. <laughs> it just sounds ridiculous. It reminds red me... It, so, so as a child, I actually had a speech impediment when I was saying my R's. So it reminds me of the tongue twister they used to give me when I had to go to speech class, which was kind of embarrassing because I, like, excelled at everything else. I mean, like, by third grade i was reading at like a sixth grade level i was i had pretty close to perfect retention with memory and everything else but i'm having to go to speech lab because i said wick instead of rick 
So they, they they would have me sit there for like 20 minutes on Tuesdays and Thursdays saying, Red Rover, Red Rover, please bring the ball over. And every time I try to say Red River Rivalry, that's what that reminds me of. <laughs> I know. It also reminds me of those like, you know, for like singers or for theater or um, anybody that's giving speeches or anything like that. It reminds me of some of the mouth warm ups too. Yeah, red leather, yellow leather. You know, that, so you're that like, was my least rivalry. favorite. <laughs> yeah. So, but yeah, so anyway. we we have that going on. So whoever wins next week, you'll hear the uh, the supporter of the losing team give out the others' battle cry as the show opens. I really, really <laughs> am hoping not to have to yell hook 'em horns, but the problem is, I'm pretty sure I've won pretty much every year since we started doing this, so I know my time's coming. <laughs> Yeah, there. When was it? A couple years ago, where we had a fluke win. Like we definitely should not have won that game. I think it's maybe it's been in the last. I think that was. I, maybe, I think that was maybe the first year that we did it because I remember being. It like, might have oh, been. Holy crap! I have to say, hook 'em horns. But then since then, <laughs> we, we've been winning. We actually used to be a lot worse about it because the the original rule was it was supposed to last all week and any groups we had in common we were supposed to do it and on bull shows and then it just kind of became eh, as long as we get it in once, who the hell cares? Yeah, yeah. Well, I'd always forget, and then I wouldn't even think about it. like that one year when you were supposed to do it. I didn't, and then you were like, oh, shoot, I've been coming in and I haven't been saying it. And blah, and I'm like, I didn't even recognize it. It's like that, just that first, like right afterwards, we're like, yeah, that's when it matters most. And then saying it once on the show or something. But yeah, because then, you, Anyways, you, then, you, then you watch in shame while everybody in the room is like, oh, my God, you just had to say their battle cry. Your team sucks. Bastards. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so anyway, um, who knows? It's a toss up every year. It's kind of like the the. Uh, the bedlam game you just never know till it's over yeah no exactly right all right so uh again pardon the background noise hopefully it's almost done um but you know so there's it's not like there's a shortage of things to talk about so where do you want to go first oh i don't know and i have not been as up to date on everything as uh you probably have been because i've just had a lot going on so why don't you decide well i mean we could talk about the four thousand pound elephant in the room that now the democrats have decided the fbi's worthless <laughs> right right in fact there was like a really good um tweet earlier about how it's like oh it's literally going to ruin democracy like you know crumble the fibers of our democracy if uh if trump questions the fbi also, though, Trump controlled the FBI, and now this is just a Republican-controlled investigation that isn't worth a damn. It's like, what? Which is it? The FBI is either under Trump's control and it's just are just a bunch of Republican hacks, or they're the very fiber of this nation. And how dare anybody question them? They just pick and choose depending on the topic. Yeah, I mean, because here's the thing, you know, everybody, you know, from the other side is like, well, you guys were dissing the FBI till like five, five seconds ago. No, we weren't. We were dissing the upper echelon of the FBI and telling him that everybody else we were pretty sure was still straight shooters. There's a huge difference between saying, hey, the guys at the top that were appointed by this hack over here have probably not been doing things the right way, but everybody else probably still doing their job to, uh, oh, they're awesome. They're the most unbiased people ever to, holy crap, they're all Trump Nazi bots. I do uh, how? <laughs> right, right. And I know that and I know that specifically you and I on this show have said that about the FBI that it we don't think that this is everyone in the FBI. We think that there have been a few players that have been bad actors and um that have undermined the presidency or have at least, you know, kind of forsaken some of some of what they've sworn to do. And that has not meant that we thought that everything and we have been clear about that multiple times that that does not mean that every person at the FBI or the entire FBI as a whole is uh is problematic. But sometimes there are, you know, bad apples in the mix and just like with anything else, you got to get them out. So here's the funny thing, and I, if I had time, because I've been scrambling all night, I was going to pull the clips because this was kind of funny. If you listen to Schumer from last week versus Schumer from today, 
It's like, what the hell? Because just about the same time last week, he was saying, we could have an investigation done and know whether this is a credible allegation in a week, maybe even less. And then today, when the FBI closes the investigation, not the Republicans, by the way, the FBI says, you know, here, here's the findings. You guys do with them whatever you want, but there's not really much here. I actually got a text from a friend in D.C. last night who had some inside info, and he's like, dude, there's nothing here. Um, so, but anyway, so the whole, the whole thing about this, you know, Chuck from last week is like, oh, this, this isn't this big a deal. I don't know why the Republicans are making this huge deal. We could do this in a couple of days. We'll know whether everything's credible. Then we'll be able to move forward. Then today he's like, and our worst fears have been realized. This was not a, this was not a comprehensive investigation. They didn't do what we asked them to do. They did exactly what you asked them to do until they, until they did it. And then you move the goalpost again. And then you tried to move the goalpost again. What I absolutely love is, and, and I, I'm really sad that it took Donald Trump standing up to people for Republicans to realize they could do the same thing, but I have absolutely loved the Republican leadership over the last few days. I don't know where they've been for the last 12 years, but I'm glad they're here now. Yeah, I am too. And, and I'm glad that this is, I, I am very sorry for Judge Kavanaugh and his family. They've had to go through all of this, but I'm very glad that there has been something that has kind of united the um, kind of populist Republicans with the traditionalist, you know, the establishment Republicans, and then even some of the more conservative libertarian Republicans, or maybe even not Republicans registered as independents or libertarians. Um, it's kind of just done so much to join the right. But, you know, this is what we said, right? As soon as they said that they would allow for an investigation, they would postpone for one week for an investigation, they would ask Trump to ask for it, blah, 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 blah. Did we not all say it'll never be enough? It doesn't matter that they'll start saying that a week isn't long enough. Then they'll say, even if they think the week is okay, they'll say that it that was insufficient, that they didn't dig deep enough. They didn't ask the people they wanted them to. They didn't look into the things they wanted to. Too limited in scope, which was, of course, something that came out here. At first, they said it can be limited in scope. Now they're saying, no, it can't, because now they haven't had really anything on the sexual allegations, sexual assault allegations, so they've gone into this entirely crazy puritanical teenage drinking thing that is just beyond me. And also, by the way, I don't think anybody really wants to go there that's sitting in Congress right now. There are maybe a few people with clean noses, but I would guess that most anybody doesn't. We're not talking about getting arrested. We're not talking about doing illegal legal drugs. We're talking about drinking beer in high school and college. And it's absolutely absurd. So the funny thing about that, and you're right, is it seems like the Puritans have suddenly switched sides because up until now, the Puritans have mainly been Republicans. So is that what happened? Did the, the Puritan Republicans get so ticked off at Trump they became Democrats and now they're influencing the entire party? Yeah, I don't know. It's just, I mean, it's funny that they're all about I mean, these are the same people that want to allow for sex changes for four and five year olds and that want to, um, uh, you know, have all sorts of like openness about sex and that it's OK for teenagers to have sex and just provide them with all of the, you know, protective things. And I'm not saying that some of that isn't wrong or right. I, you know, whatever. That's not what I'm really coming. I'm just saying they seem to be pretty progressive and liberal with a lot of things like that and think that things are no big deal and also things like things like um you know whenever we're talking about someone in a minority community um that is being prosecuted for a crime and they think well that's too harsh like he's just 17 or he's just 19 or he's just 21 and like okay he has a couple weapons charges okay he has a couple drug charges but like this is too much like we don't he didn't do this just because he has some stuff on his record. Well, that's actually people with records, and they defend them vehemently, and sometimes rightly so. I mean, there is kind of a bias there when it comes to stuff like that very often. But here we have a guy who has an impeccable record, who's an incredible educational and professional career, um, who has, like we've talked about ad nauseum, like been, you know, investigated and, and had background checks and had now seven vetting times. done. Yes, all these times and we want to talk about some terms used in a yearbook and about how much is too much to drink as you know an 18 year old when it was legal like it's just ridiculous i mean i i uh had tweeted and um so it's kind of funny 
I at my event this week, um, it was mostly females that were kind of running the shindig and I overheard them saying and they were basically like one of them was like, oh, I'm just so sick of it. I wish they just vote like I wish they just get over with and vote. Can we move on? And one of the other ones just said, yeah, no, no, no joke. Yes or no. That's all it is. And then someone else responded and was like, I mean, doesn't most everyone like know what they already think about this guy, right? Like whether they want to vote for them or not. Is there really that many that are like not sure and that whether he drank in college or not is really going to make a difference? And all of them said, uh, well, we're all effing screwed if that's the case. And everyone died, you know, burst into laughter. And I think that for some people that aren't super political, which I don't think these women were, I heard that's the only thing I really heard them talk about. And I think it's just because it's been on TV and it's been headlining the news and all of that. Um, I think for people that aren't really that political, they're not thinking about this as deeply as, you know, those really entrenched in the right and really entrenched in the left are. And they're just like, move on. Can we get on with it? And what is this about scrutinizing the yearbooks and the drinking? They they find it absolutely stupid. And they should. Well, I mean, that's the thing, though. It is absolutely stupid. I mean, the worst thing about this is what it's done to the Me Too movement, because what they don't realize they've done is they've, had, they've actually taken something that actually was, was kind of a good thing, and they've politicized the hell out of it. So now nobody's going to believe them for at least a while, because they're going to be like, oh, is this another, uh, as I call her, Blazy, uh, Blazy Ford situation? Because, uh, you know, that, that's just it. I mean, the thing about it is they haven't been able to find anything to corroborate anything that she said. But they've now managed to catch her in perjury. Right. There's been, there's been quite a few things that um, can be fairly easily proven, you know, wrong that she that she said or, or, or that were misleading or that, you know, she got pieces of it wrong and everything. And so, um, but, you know, they're never going to go anywhere than that. I can promise you that. But you know what I think has been more frustrating to me than, than that is um, all of these – all of these articles now coming out, you know, uh, trying to act like this is something good for this has been something that is going to make a difference for sexual assault survivors everywhere that she has come out and done this so bravely and it is going to change something for other victims or it's going to empower them or whatever else. And uh, one of my misfits and good friends, um, Alex, uh, at Varen Vulnero one on Twitter, um, did a pretty good little thread I'd like to read real quick about that. So Times, Times headline, um, or one of the main tweets from Time, and um, it's called Her Lasting Impact. And it's her raising her right hand to swear, and her face and her shirt and her hand and everything is made out of words of her, from her testimony. Um, and so the quote is Ford's testimony was an invitation to speak up no matter how powerful the accused, no matter how long ago the attack, people will listen. The country seemed to reassure them. We will believe you. So she says, but Ford's testimony was not an invitation. Ford's testimony says that a bunch of powerful people might listen to you if it is politically expedient and a bunch of others might not because it is politically awkward. Ford's experience in reporting her assault offers almost no lessons to the millions of people victimized by sexual assault. Most assailants are not important enough for Diane Feinstein to care. Most assaults are not interesting enough to earn you pro bono representation for a televised hearing of massive national interest for one second. I'm sorry. My son is very rudely interrupting me. <laughs> okay. All right. So the good news is now that she's being interrupted, my other stuff's finally done. So there's no loud, crazy noises in the background. Um, so we're just going to talk for a second while she's dealing with her son. So uh, I see uh, Ron and uh, RB in the chat. How you guys doing? Um, and uh, so, I don't know. Um, okay, sorry. Okay. Way well, you're back. Oh, uh, man. Anyways, we've had a little bit of issues today. Okay, uh, so no um, says, I left off saying about how, you know, most cases are not important enough for Diane Feinstein to care. Most assaults are not interesting enough to earn you pro bono representation for a televised hearing of massive national interest. For most people, there is no GoFundMe to pay for your lawyers or security protect you from friends of the accused or for time off from work to attend hearing after hearing after hearing. Ford's accusation is quite literally a one in a million incidence of an accused being important. 
important enough that millions of people will wear I believe her t-shirts in her honor. No, this is totally irrelevant for sexual assault victims whose recourse is not holier than thou defense from Democratic senators, but an indifferent and skeptical justice system that is only of use if you can produce evidence beyond a reasonable doubt. There is none of this. She is a hero because she was believable and credible BS. You're getting police officers who have a thousand other things to do and prosecutors who approach you with skepticism because they know that defense attorneys will be ruthless. Then you will be accused of fabricating your story or exaggerating or having retroactive regrets about sleeping with someone. You probably drank too much or the, wore the wrong clothes or sent the wrong signals. I mean, are you sure you said no? How many times did you try to push him off of you? You're not really in, uh, injured enough that it looks like you really fought him off. I mean, if someone was trying to rape me, I within an inch of my life. I'd be hurt a lot worse than you. And that, of course, is if you report your assault right away and the time for a rape kit of some other medical examination. Don't think, don't even think about taking like a shower or something or going home and crying for a day because you don't know what to do. No, you need to go to the doctor right away. And I mean right away because every minute you wait, the weaker and weaker your case gets. And all of the people who are supposed to help you, the police and the DA, they know this and they can't be spending their scarce resources on losing cases. It's not that they're heartless or don't believe you. It's that they deal in evidence and proof and they can't help you without it. A 35-year-old allegation that came up in therapy can't be corroborated and includes almost no details of use. You are going to get laughed right out of the police station. No one in is going to be warm and empathetic and argue that you have a right to be heard. Nobody is going to give a crap. You are on your own, and it is going to be cold, lonely, expensive, heartless, and, and a soul-crushing experience. So, no, this is not an invitation to speak out, nor a message that people will listen to you. People will not listen to you, and very few people will either believe you or care. This is a wholly unique situation where it is politically useful for Ford to be heard, so there are people with the power to make her heard willing to do that. This is utterly useless and not the least bit encouraging for anyone who has ever been assaulted by someone that a national political party isn't currently trying to ruin. I would and I mean hot damn. Yeah, you can't see it, but I'm standing and clapping. No, not really, but I would be. Um, I mean, I mean, really, she she really took so much of it about the whole, um, you know, I kept trying to put my thoughts into words about this whole thing and, and revering her and acting like it's, you know, such a such a great step forward and it's so inspiring and it's going to do so much for the Me Too movement for sexual assault victims and all of this. And I kept going, no, it's not. No, it's actually making it worse. And also nobody that has been sexually assaulted is ever. I mean, so few people are ever going to be in this position. And that's like she said, it's like a one in a million situation. And again, like she said, it's not because they don't believe you, but if there's no evidence, you don't have a case and they're never going to hear you. They're not going to sit and depose you. They're not going to let it even get into court. So no, what she's doing right now and what she experienced, even if it was completely true on her part, um, is, is not typical and is not something that would ever be taken seriously in almost any other manner in this, in this world. <laughs> Yeah, no, you're pretty much right there. All right, we're at the bottom of the hour. We're going to take a really quick break. When we come back, I actually have some uh, outside feedback of some weird stuff that I've been hearing in regards to this. And just, I don't know, I think it's going to be enough to make you guys' head explode. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. This is Jen Rick right here on KLRNRadio.com, where liberty and reason still reign. We'll see you in about three minutes. Don't go away. Sun was in the army back during Desert Storm, but even then he wanted an MBA. He looked at a dozen schools, but only one offered the online education and flexibility he needed while he was in a tent in Iraq. Grantham University. Turns out that Grantham's been delivering affordable, relevant college and advanced degrees for over 65 years. Heck, if they can deliver a quality education to a soldier in a tent overseas, think about the flexibility Grantham can offer you so you can earn your degree too. It doesn't matter how complicated or full your life is. If getting a degree is on your bucket list, you'll want to do what my son did. You'll want to call Grantham. Find out how easy it is to get started on your education so you can check that college degree off your bucket list. Call Grantham right now. 800-910-1370. That's 800-910-1370. Flexible. Affordable. Relevant. Call 800-910-1370. 
Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill? Call today and get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay $15 a pill pharmacy prices again. Get Viagra for less than $3 a pill. Call 1-800-516-7602 today and save up to $500 and get 40 pills for just $99. Healthy Man is fast, easy, and affordable. Operators are waiting at 1-800-516-7602 to take your call right now. Call 1-800-516-7602. That's 1-800-516-7602. Again, 1-800-516-7602. Attention business owners and independent contractors. This is a money-saving message from Tax Mediation Services. If your business owes $20,000 or more in taxes, we can help you today, right now. Listen, dealing with the IRS is no picnic. It's an intimidating and extremely stressful process, and you don't want to go it alone. Our attorneys know every law, every tax break, and every possible opportunity to help you resolve and reduce your tax debt. And if you owe more than $20,000, you may be at the top of their hit list. So don't take your tax debt lightly because it will not go away on its own. The IRS can seize your bank accounts, your home, and even shut down your business. Call our tax experts today at 1-800-783-0810 and let us deal with the IRS while you focus on your business. That's 1-800-783-0810. Again, that's 800-783-0810. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. This is Jim and Nick. We're live right here on KLRNRadio.com, where liberty and reason still reign. We do this thing every Tuesday, Thursday night, uh, except for occasionally <laughs> at 10 p.m. Eastern, 9 Central. <laughs> I am one half of the crew, and you guys already know all that, so we're not going to keep going with that little spiel. But anyway, so when we went to break, I told you guys when we came back, I was going to talk about some of the things that have been driving me crazy, because, you know, I, had, I actually, while I was catching up on other things, I was watching. Oh, no, no. Go ahead. Sorry. No, no, no. Sorry. Uh-oh. I Nope. I was that was to Ben and I thought I had it muted, but I didn't. <laughs> I was like, "Uh oh, I'm being given the wave off. She must have come up with something important." All right. So anyway, <laughs> No, so, continue, please. No, it's all right. So anyway, so um one of the things that drove me crazy today cuz I actually had a chance to turn on and I was flipping through a few different channels and it, it's funny the different slants you get whether you're on CNN, MSNBC or Fox. But the funny thing is the story was all kind of the same from the people they were getting the sound bites from. All the Democratic senators kept using this phrase over and over and over again. He's not really entitled to innocent until proven guilty because this was a job interview. This was not a criminal court. So what drives me crazy about that is I actually know people who are attorneys who have said the same thing to me. And I looked at them like they grew 14 heads. I'm like, are you seriously talking to me right now about due process being only applicable in a criminal court? Due process is the foundation of Western civilization, you nimrod. Where the hell did you get your law degree out of a Cracker Jack box? Boom, I got blocked. Well, of course you did. But, you know, this this has been pretty thoroughly dismantled by several people. And it's just not really it. it it's not really a great comparison. Um, you know. What has been going on here is not really something that is, of course, anything like what you would have in a job interview, Um, but also it's just very – this has implications on every bit of his life. Like when you go in for a job interview, and even if you have to be highly scrutinized, because there are jobs where that's the case and not necessarily on a national media level, but you do have to be highly scrutinized. You have to go through background checks. You um, have some privacy invaded. They talk to other people in your life and all this kind of thing. Um, But those, those findings, and even if you don't get the job, that all usually stays 
uh, within the findings of whoever is doing the investigating or the vetting. Um, and in this situation, this is not, this is affecting his entire life. And if he is not approved for the Supreme Court, um, then it's not just like, oh, well, he just doesn't, you know, he just gets to keep his job. He's just not getting a new one that's even better. No, like there's no way that you can tell me that if you think he's unfit for the Supreme Court, that he's unfit for the D.C. Circuit Court of Appeals. Like, obviously, that job will, he'll either be impeached if or they'll attempt to impeach him or um, he m would maybe be forced to resign. I mean, you just never know. But I mean, it, like he said, he can't teach anymore. He can't He can't uh, coach his girls' basketball teams anymore. Um, he They've had death threats, all this stuff. And I'm sorry, there is no job interview on this dang planet where anything like that comes, comes out of it. And so uh, I think it just, I think that it's really... Uh, disingenuous of course but also just really dismissive and kind of diminishing to to act like oh whatever so he doesn't get to be a justice big deal this is not even remotely the same as garland this is not the same uh, you know similar in nature to a few others but there have been plenty of supreme uh, supreme court nominees that have not made it through and it has been not even close um to this kind of situation and so um that it, this has completely ruined his entire life and reputation if he isn't confirmed. And that is not something a normal job interview would do. Yeah, no, the scariest thing about this is the Democrats went all in here um, to the point where they basically just threw everything they had at it. They're like, screw it. We don't care if these are legit allegations or not. As far as we're concerned, he's guilty. Hell, Cory Booker's already said as much. I don't care if he's guilty or not. He's not qualified for the position. The Republicans should put up somebody else. So I'm going to say this one last time. Look, Kavanaugh, if I was president of the United States, Kavanaugh probably wouldn't have been my choice for a Supreme Court nominee because he's way too squishy, in my opinion, on the Patriot Act. But I didn't take the time to run for president and win the election. Donald Trump did that. That means Donald Trump gets to have his picks unless he's in a lame duck, unless he's within what, maybe 14, 16 months of a lame duck term, then we should probably follow the same rule that the Democrats established and say, hey, maybe we should wait to see what happens for the election until we put somebody else on the court. You know, just, you know, out of courtesy in case there's a change up. Because, you know, as much as that rule w seemed like a really good idea to the Democrats and then suddenly it was a terrible idea when the Republicans did the same thing, I actually kind of like that rule, to be quite honest. I don't think a lame duck president should be able to put somebody up on the Supreme Court. I don't care what l the letter is behind their name because there's an election coming up and if the if – the public has lost if the president has lost the will of the public to the point where there's going to be a change in party then i don't think the party that's on the way out should be the one getting to pick the supreme court nominee and that was biden's logic whether you liked it or not at the time it made sense it made just as much sense for the republicans to say the same thing when it was garland's turn they're like hey remember this thing called the biden rule we didn't like it at the time but we kind of think it makes sense now what's going to irritate me and you know what's going to happen Let's let's fast forward to 2020 and, you know, assume that Donald Trump gets another term because it's probably going to happen because the Democrats aren't able to stop being crazy. But who knows what's going to happen by 2024? So in 2023, when there's RBG finally is carted off, you know, and somebody has to replace her when Donald Trump says, oh, I'm still on, I'm still president for another year. I no, 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 <laughs> because. That makes you a hypocrite. Right. I mean, I I did think that there I, – I obviously didn't want a Democrat. I didn't want another uh, Supreme Court justice um, appointed by a Democrat, and I didn't want – Hey, you know, a liberal leaning justice, though Garland's, you know, not super liberal, but a liberal leaning justice uh, to go on the court knowing that, you know, not knowing what was going to happen and all of that. Uh, I, I was someone who thought I, I could see it both ways. I could see that it was, you know, kind of crappy um, that there was still a decent amount of time left in a presidency. You know, I, I, I think almost a year is a pretty long time when you only have four as far as your term goes. I know he had eight total, but that term was only four. You know, that's one-fourth of your presidency almost. So I kind of, 
you know, I can side with that a little bit, but then I also get the other side of like, no, like this big election's coming up and the times are changing and the tide is a turning. So, um, especially when you know that, I don't think that Republicans would have fought it that much. Um, and I don't think the base would have cared so much if we didn't think that, you know, we were going to win this presidential election because even before Trump, I think that Republicans were pretty much, we were getting very confident that we were going to beat her unless like there was some right outright cheating going on. Um, and so I get both sides of the argument, but again, like this is how, this is like the bed you made Democrats. So I don't really care. I don't, I don't want to hear it. Well, that's like everybody that's whining about um, the, 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 the 60 vote being lowered to simple majority. Mm -hmm. I, you know, as much as I was opposed to that at the time, going back and looking at how Supreme Court nominations used to be done, I, I think it kind of makes sense because there used to be this big deal where it seemed like this big deal to get the 60 votes because then, you know, it was like a super majority. But I'd like even our, even RBG was confirmed 93 votes to three. Because the Republicans right. said, hey, no, I don't like her politics, but is she qualified to be a judge on the well, Supreme Court? Well, that's the thing Court? is it used to be actually based on merits and not based on political ideologies. And so whether it was Republicans in control of the Senate or Democrats in control <clears throat> of the Senate, and regardless of who was in the in the Oval uh, choosing these justices, unless there were some really true concerns um, that you know were grievous uh, – I, ideology had nothing to do with it. Like party that they belong, they registered with had nothing to do with it. And it was a considerate thing to go, okay, we're going to go through the hearings. We're going to ask the right questions. We're going to look at their, um, you know, their history. And then, and then we're, we're mostly going to confirm. I mean, and it was kind of a ceremonious thing as opposed to uh, what it's turned into, which is like an all out war. Dude, it's like the geriatric Crips and the Bloods up in there. Absolutely. It, it's kind of scary when you stop and think about it. I mean, that's like today I saw I, – I, was it Pelosi? It was either Pelosi or Feinstein. I don't remember which one. She was – there was a bunch of people that were standing outside of – I believe they were standing outside of the Supreme Court and just completely like screaming and yelling and protesting. Linda Sarasara was there. Other people were there. And that's when they – there was this – girl probably looked like she was maybe maybe 18 standing there in tears the people should be the one deciding who this, the next supreme court nominee is and it shouldn't be this old rich entitled white guy who doesn't give a damn about us and this is coming from a white girl oh it always is <laughs> i mean it almost always is but it, it's like all the white girls on twitter telling white men to shut up i'm like oh aren't you darling um but you know, I, and again, I can kind of see how they're saying that, but at the same time, like Trump still gets to pick a nominee. This isn't the same thing as a presidential election. You're okay. He might would have to move a little bit further towards the middle with a judge in order. But here's the problem with this: they turned a pretty milk toast and fairly moderate judge um, mm. in, in a lot of ways. Yes, he's a textualist, but so are you know the. I mean. Honestly, that that is moderate. Being a textualist, is, I know they don't want to see it that way, but being an originalist is the moderate position for a judge. Um, it, being an activist on either side, uh, right or left, is not. So when he said some of the things he did about precedent and upholding, um, you know, based on precedent, upholding Roe v. Wade, um, unless a specific kind of case was, you know, I know he didn't get into these details, but we've seen how for an originalist, unless a specific kind of case is brought with very specific wording and things that then they can rule on actual row and not just on something pertaining to row. Um, he has said that he wouldn't overturn it because he does, you know, he is a textualist. So that actually is moderate. But here is kind of a establishment, um, you know, more moderate kind of traditional Republican as opposed to, you know, even a Gorsuch who is who's quite you know, I feel like he is more conservative than Kavanaugh is in a lot of ways and definitely more than, um, oh, Miss Amy, 
that they would just rip apart over who knows what. They were already gearing it up about the Catholic Church being a cult and blaming her for the child molestations by priests and all sorts of crazy crap like that. But she is way further right than Kavanaugh. And so they blew, uh, uh, well, I'll go ahead and say it, forgive my language, but they blew their whole load over kind of a very milk toast uh, candidate. And uh, it, I mean, that's kind of the more ridiculous part. So who do they think that Trump is going to nominate, even if the Democrats end up controlling the Senate, that they're going to have to play this game every time and not confirm he's not going to go much farther left. And and you don't get much more kind of everyday, normal, just decent judge with a great record than Brett Kavanaugh. Yeah, but see, and, we, and, and I agree with you, by the way, but, but what I've seen happening, and if you look at the numbers, and this came out from NPR, by the way, um, just a bit, little bit over a month ago, generic polling had the Dems up plus 10. Generic polling today has Dems and Republicans in a dead heat within the margin of the margin of error for the poll. Yeah. And we've talked about, I'm not sure what will happen, um, you know, if we are able to uh, confirm Kavanaugh. Um, with the Republicans' momentum. I hope it stays high since this carried on longer and since it just got more ridiculous. So I hope that momentum stays high. Um, we know that the Dems will kind of rapidly increase if he's confirmed because I'm even afraid we might have violence and fires and who knows what else because people have lost their ever-loving minds. But th this is the thing that I don't understand because these are the same people that you know are talking about how how civility must stand but these are the same people that every time something doesn't go their way they start shrieking at the sky they go burn things they loot things they go they show up to college in their pajamas with their safe space bunnies and their pizzas ordered from their professors i just what 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 are they possibly hoping is going to happen here because if they pick a fight they're going to lose I mean, you you piss off the red, I mean, I, you piss off the rednecks, the bikers, and the ex-military. You're gonna lose. I mean, there are they they're already losing so much. I mean, I don't care about these like highly motivated voters that may go and vote. I just mean that in general, like the the Democrats lost this. Um, they lost the narrative. They lost the. I, I mean, I just think that other. I, I think that our little bubble of Twitter, you know. Um, you see so much more of the extremists, of course. And uh, I think that just even just what I was saying, what I was overhearing um, on the streets of downtown Austin and at this event that I was running, just overhearing people kind of casually talking about this. And th they were not outraged either way. They were more of just like, what the heck? This is so, can we get on with it? But my husband and I did go into... Um, our bank the other day because we had to deal with some stuff and um, the guy did start kind of vaguely talking to us about it in very like veiled terms <laughs> and then he was like well I'm not trying to say hey, one you. thing either way he's like psst, psst, but hey you yeah what do you he, think he about was, this I was like how did you know to talk to me about this it was just so funny like am I am I, I must just like exude like I'll do politics <laughs> but um he <laughs> but he was like yeah, at first I thought like it was kind of like, you know, okay, whoa, we, this needs to be something that's looked at. And yeah, this story sounds, you know, messed up and blah, blah, blah. And he's like, but then it just became an outright witch hunt. And I'm sorry, I'm just never going to get on board with that. So they lost me there and the media is going crazy. And so I can't even watch anything. I don't even care who it is. I don't care if it's, you know, what channel it is. I don't want to watch any of them because they are just going nuts. And it is absolutely ridiculous. And I was like, See, I think that's what the average American thinks about this. They think and, it's absolutely ridiculous. And I can tell you that you're pretty much right because what one of the things that I've been doing over the last couple of weeks is I will go out into the common area where I work um, and I'll just kind of randomly stop and talk to people and be like, hey, you know, I have a the talk show that I do a couple times a week. I have some questions for you. If you don't mind, you got a minute and they'll walk, we'll walk and we'll talk. And pretty much everybody that I've talked to has been like, we don't even really understand what the hell is going on. Just give the guy the vote already. If you don't want to vote for him, fine. Just give him the vote. Vote no and move on. 
But and then the the next person I talked to said the only reason this drew out the way it did is because the Democrats knew they didn't have the votes to stop him, and they were hoping that if they bought they got they bought up enough public sympathy for this woman who had all this stuff supposedly happened to her almost forty years ago was exactly how the guy put it um, that they would be able to turn enough senators, and that's the scary thing because you saw Flake. If you've seen the video, Flake was actually accosted in an elevator to the point where one of these people was like shrieking at him, "Look at me when I'm talking to you! If you confirm this person, you're 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 you're, ab- you're, you're validating every rapist on the planet." Blah 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 blah. Don't don't look away from me when I'm talking to you. These are the people that we're dealing with right now. They are completely unhinged. I will say this again: if there was one one credible piece of evidence that said Brett Kavanaugh was the monster you're painting him to be, I would be marching with you, not standing against you. But there's not. Yeah, it just doesn't make sense. And again, wanting to, you know, punish him for and kind of hold him accountable and make him the example, um, even though there isn't any evidence and uh, any credible charges that make him accountable and then make him pay for the sins of all sorts of, you know, all, all sexual assault, you know, uh, people that have committed sexual assault, people that have been bullies, people that have just been drunks and mean to people, uh, people that have gotten in bar fights or whatever, and that you want to convict him for all of their sins and use him as the example of how we're not going to tolerate this and we're going to show you that the white boy will not write again kind of crap, then, uh, you know, you're the one with a moral problem here. Not me. Not me standing up for a man that, uh, for, for all I can see from all the lack of evidence that there is, is innocent. Uh, and even if he is guilty of maybe even a portion of this, it's likely pretty minor and no one can remember anything of the sort serious happening. So you're really convicting him for drinking in high school and being a jock. And, I, you know, I'm not going to say I'm not the one with a moral problem um, sitting here defending him when that's all I have to go on. You're the one with a moral problem that wants to convict him, indict him for, um, you know, the sins of every white frat boy jock that you have ever hated. And I think that's where a lot of you, – you hit on a pretty good point there because I think that's where a lot of this comes from. I think these people all have pin-up frustrations that, and they've managed to it, – it's like when you, you know, when you break up with your ex and you put their picture on the dartboard and you're, mm-hmm. throw, you're throwing the darts at the pictures. I think what they've done is they've taken everything that's ever happened to them when they were in high school that was probably done by a jock was pro- unfortunately was probably also white and probably fairly well off and they've transferred all that hate under Brett Kavanaugh or Brett Kavanaugh. I, I, I really yes. th- I really think that has a lot to do with it. And I think you Oh I know it does. I, I know it does. The and then to call and, and then up. to sully sully the Me Too movement or, or the original objectives and goals of the Me Too movement by sullying that by um claiming that they will somehow be helping sexual assault survivors by not allowing him to be on the Supreme Court, even whether he did it or not. Because I've, I've seen some people start to adjust it to say, like, even if he didn't do it, what Ford did was great. And so it would send a real message. Either way, it sends a good message or a bad message to sexual assault survivors. And that is just disgusting to decide that it's okay to sacrifice this man, his family, and his life's work um, for you to be able to prove some sort of point one way or the other. That is absolutely disgusting to me. The scariest thing is when, the, you know, the FBI called the, the thing off today and they called for closure. Um, there was, I don't remember who it was, one of the blue checks had put a tweet out about, you know, this is wrong and the investigation wasn't in-depth enough. And then somebody else underneath it tweeted that, you know, one-third of the women in America were – uh, assault victim survivors and that we they were going to put all the Republicans out of business. The first thing I thought of was that means two-thirds of the women in this country, first of all, aren't necessarily going to relate because they haven't been through that type of trauma, but they also probably have husbands, brothers, and fathers, and they're looking at this going, it, what the – I mean, it you know, it used to be – you know, the, the the Democratic phrase used to be war on women, war on women, war on women. I think they're managing to flip the script. 
I think they're about to try to make me an endangered species. I mean, likely so. It's just, I mean, it, it's a scary time to be a white man. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it does seem to be getting more and more uh, just uh, the the vitriol being, um, you know, spout, you know, just being pushed at um, white people in general, but particularly the white male and particularly the young white male. Um, and I'm not saying there are jerks, but there are jerks of every race, of every demographic, of every educational, you know, s- status of every career. Uh, it, it doesn't matter who you are or where you're from. Jerks are going to be jerks. And I do understand that there is something to the spoiled factor and the being raised in a certain kind of world and elitist and all of that. And I'm fine with making a few generalizations here or there and 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 having some stereotypes. In the, but, but if we're going to hold those stereotypes that way, then you got to accept them the other way too. So you don't want us to stereotype people in poor communities, but it's totally fine to stereotype everyone in a rich community. And, uh, you know, that's the kind of thing that we have to be careful of it, it, for anyone that wants to be intellectually honest uh, is that, you know, if you're going to go one way, then if you're going to accept that kind of speech, that kind of behavior, that kind of characterization on one side, then you've got to accept it on another as well. Yeah, I mean, it just n- none of this makes sense to me. I want to go over one thing real quick, and then we've got to start making our way to get out of here in case the show that's on behind us is going to be on. But, you know, it, it's not just this narrative that's fallen apart for them uh, as far as the, the radical left goes. Because the other thing that's gotten really, really weird is, you know, remember when, you know, homosexuality was really becoming the thing that they wanted to push for and that they were trying to say, you know, these people are people too. They deserve the same rights as you, blah, blah, blah. I don't care what your point of view is on that. That's not what I want to talk about. But that's now morphed into this thing of because, you know, it, you, you know, the the. The argument that used to always get thrown back in their face is, well, you know, you should mar- you should marry this nice girl and you should have babies. Well, that that's not the type of person that I that I want to be with physically because that's not who I'm attracted to. So now that they've gotten things more commonplace, where now it's you know it's okay to, to be them in public, and now we've got transgenders and everything else. Now there's this whole movement of if you're dating someone and they don't tell you that you're tra- they're transgendered, when you get to the point where you're getting a little amorous with them and suddenly you find a stick shift where you're not expecting one, you're supposed to be okay with that. Because it, it, it doesn't matter what equipment they have because you were attracted to them before you knew they had a penis. Yeah, no, sorry. Not going to play that game. But no, I, mean, I also I also am attracted to some people before I know they have a drug habit and I turn them down too. I mean, you know, there are things that hey, people you have we as restrictions. That. You said we weren't going to talk about that. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, there are things that people have as their limit. There are things that are deal breakers and that's okay. You know, I I I understand that everyone wants to live in this, you know, f- you know, faux utopia where they think that, you know, first of all, everything's not equal. And so we have to demand all these crazy things for special treatment for certain people. But also, oh, we're all equal. So you shouldn't even care if I have a penis or a vagina. No, like if I want to I I am not a lesbian because I am attracted to men and because I want them to have one member that is working that can also help me have children uh that was a requirement for me sorry not sorry so uh it's okay if that's not a if that's one that you don't want that that's like a definite no on your list the same way as it can be about about smoking about drinking about a, about a family member that is crazy that they won't cut off you know about um uh, that they're that they're not very well educated, and you're like, well, I was attracted to you, but uh, now it's not really there. Then I mean, you, then those you opened things, your mouth and you ruined it. <laughs> yeah, thing, different thing, or that they're rude to certain kinds of people, like they're rude to service people, or that they're just really wonderful and nice, but you don't have a spark. That happens too, and one of those requirements for most people is to have a little bit of a spark and have a little bit of passion and a and a wanting need for them. And if that you find out that someone doesn't have the equipment that you thought they did or hoped they had, uh, that can take that away to where then you just don't. You're not going to go there. That's not going to be there for you. And then some people are going to be outright repulsed. And whatever, I don't give a crap. And you don't get to call them intolerant because they're like. 
I didn't want to get with a dude. Sorry. All right. So on that note, why don't you remind folks where it is that they can hang out with you when you're not on the radio hanging out with me? When I'm not um, going off about trannies, I guess. <laughs> um, you can find me on Twitter at Jay Homestead. Um, and then check out Misfits Politics uh, at Misfits Politics on Twitter and then MisfitsPolitics.com. All right, and you can follow along with me on Twitter at uh, at RowdyRick73. Eventually, I'll remember that I actually changed my at. Um, and you can also find me on Facebook. You can also shoot me an email at rickatkaylorandradio.com. On that note, folks, we are out. I have not heard from Jess tonight, so I don't know if she plans on doing a show, but this is our time slot, so we're going to get out of the way. You guys have a great night. There will not be a Robinson and the Right tomorrow. We have a repeat of the state championship for 2A tomorrow night, us versus Millwood. Pray for us because they killed us last year. We'll see you guys Monday. Monday.